hello everybody round two this is the vlog kind of compilation video of my experience with my second foster so hang out and enjoy the ride look who just got here hi hi handsome this is taz guys he's my new foster i'm sorry i look like a bean but it's raining out and i had to go grab this thing Oh, you want to make out? You want to make out? You want kisses? You have to see how cute his face is. Hi, sweetheart. Hi. Oh, you're going to trip on your leash. Ooh, don't throw up. Are you car sick? Come on, let's go. Come on. Come on. I know you got to go down and you got to go back up. Come on. Come here, sweetie. Yes, you can do it. I don't think he's ever gone upstairs. <laughs> So he found a pile of like <laughs> sea garbage, like sticks and stuff. Probably smells really terrible and he keeps peeing on it. Hey. The sweetest little face. Let's explore, bud. You can do whatever you want. Sniff all you want. Okay, so we just peed outside, so I feel confident to let him sniff around and explore. We found the bed. We, the cat tree that turned into a plant stand. He hasn't noticed Gizmo yet, but we'll see what happens when he does. Oh, there he is. It's your roommate. It's your new roommate. Did I excite you? No, don't do that. You okay? No, don't stress him out. Come on. All right, let's move on. Come on, there's more to explore. Like feeding you. Let's see if he eats. Sometimes when dogs come from a transport, they're pretty stressed out, so he might nibble. He seems like he's warming up, so he might eat. He's following me like a shadow. Look at you. Hello. Um, ignore the way I look. Uh, I just finished working out. But uh, this little boy is a little bit stinky. We're in the bathroom and I'm gonna give him a little bath and then I'm gonna brush his teeth because he has a foul mouth. <laughs> you have a foul smelling little mouth boy. Hi sir. I guess I'll just videotape that because what else do we got to do? Come here. Hi sweetheart. It's okay. Alright, I'm gonna have to get in the tub with him, I'm sure. Do you like your shower? <laughs> you knocked your butt. Okay, so we just took a bath. Um, he definitely didn't enjoy it. Um, afterwards, he was like doing some zoomies and rubbing his face all on the carpet and the towels and stuff. So he's definitely not in a bad mood, but he just didn't, he didn't enjoy the bath. Uh, but he's, he's perfectly happy now. But this kid has the stinkiest dog breath I've ever smelled in my life. Like, I'm sorry, that's so mean, but he, smells, he has like poop mouth. I'm gonna make him some DIY doggy toothpaste. You really only need two ingredients. It's baking soda and coconut oil. And then I'm using an old toothbrush and a few drops of peppermint extract just to give him some minty goodness. And it should make him wanna eat it a little bit more. So we're gonna do that. You need some coconut oil. This I already melted. Some peppermint flavor, optional. Um, a mixing thing, and then some baking soda. Ignore the plastic. I'm at my parents' house, don't judge me. And this is my old toothbrush, or an old toothbrush that I had laying around, and I hope it fits in his mouth. Have you ever had your teeth brushed before? Come here. Come here. 
Yes, come here. How's that taste? It's coconut. He doesn't like it. Come here. Hi, Hansel. You want to try? Yeah, let's get in there. Yeah. Oh, good job. Look in it. I don't know if this is really going to do much. Yeah, it's okay. Let's just get the other side. Come here. Oh, sweetheart. You're like, what are you doing to me? First the bath and now teeth brushing. All right, so I'm just gonna um, put this in a little container and save it for possibly tomorrow. We'll try again. Good morning. You ready to go outside, sir? You wanna go outside? You wanna go outside, mister? Yes. Go pee pee. Day two of having Sir Taz here and he woke up this morning well I actually had an alarm go off for some weird reason at 7 45 this morning on my phone and so that woke him up oh, he's being good um so that woke him up and then he did something that Zeus had been doing he noticed his reflection in the full-length mirror in the room and he just started barking and did not stop. That happened for like about an hour or so. And then he finally went back to bed. And then um, around nine o'clock, I woke up again and then he, he was up and there was no going back to bed. So we are outside now. And nine o'clock is pretty good for a dog. Sorry, I keep looking away from the camera because I'm just trying to keep an eye on him. Uh, he is wearing a leash right now, even though our backyard is all fenced in besides obviously the water but he won't really go down there I think the waves kind of freak him out um, so I just have to keep an eye on him in, ch in case he somehow finds a way out I have to be able to grab his leash here he comes hi sir that was so cute you having fun well, I have my coffee here I'm just gonna sit and make sure he pees and he poops possibly all right well yep that's a morning update and uh, Catch you on the flip side. All right, so I don't think I'm, I'm not sure if I mentioned this, but he hasn't been eating um, that much. He's pretty picky. He's not eating the kibble. So I looked online at how to, you know, um, doctor up some kibble and make it more suitable for a picky eater. Um, so I just, this is, this is what we're working with. This is the concoction I mixed together. I had some canned chicken breast. Um, Put a little bit of parsley on there and then um, added a tablespoon of coconut oil and just kind of mixed it all together and i hope that kind of works like wet food for him so let's let's see if you like it you want to come try it yeah you like the chicken Spit out a kibble. So it looks like he's munching down on that pretty well. Way better than he was even, he was like completely ignoring um, the dry food. So we're definitely gonna have to go back outside after this cause he's probably gonna poop a lot. He literally is licking the bowl clean. But you left all the kibble. All right, so we're just gonna say no to kibble. Is that is that how we're gonna work now? You like the way that tastes though, right? Hello everybody, I'm gonna get on the floor so this little boy. Can hang out with us um today is what's today wednesday i set a whole bunch of calls for potential adopters today i'm doing facetime um virtual home tours with them and then i have a few just regular phone calls for people who just kind of want to talk about him um and so that actually starts in 10 minutes so i'm gonna go downstairs and set everything up on my laptop i will also have him with me so that they can see in real life because pictures just don't do dogs all the justice of their cute little faces. You are such a love bug. Look at him. Hello. Come here, Tazzy. Um, that's a weird angle. This is where I'm kind of set up right now for these calls. My, you're propped up against my laptop, but I'm pulling up, <laughs> I'm pulling up the, um, potential adopters, um, application 
and then I'm FaceTiming them on my laptop so I can scroll through it and ask any questions that I have. Um, but they're basically just showing me, we're doing the virtual um, home tour. So they're taking um, their phone and kind of just walking around and showing me the areas of the house and backyard that the dog will be in. And yeah, so far I've done two of them. I have a call now. Somebody has already been approved for um, their home check. So it's just going to be a phone call to talk about when we're going to set up a meet and greet. And um, because of the COVID-19 outbreak, unfortunately, uh, we all want to stay safe. So we're going to um, plan these meet and greets in public areas or at one of the potential foster, I mean, adopters um, houses, if they have like a fenced in backyard. So we're thinking dog parks or that as an option. And we'll do a leash to leash um, with gloves on and masks on, obviously. So it'll be a good way for him to just meet his potential new owners. We'll see the fit is right. I just had two phone calls. They both went great and feeling one is a better fit than the other so far. I still have a few more people to interview. And um, yeah, so I mean, with this, it's really just like you go with your gut. My alarm clock just went off. Um, oh, I was supposed to set a reminder. Mm -hmm. Where'd you find that? Um, YouTube. Okay. I got this recipe off YouTube. For dogs? Yeah. I think the lady added, the only ingredient I didn't have was string beans. Did you like your dinner? Was it nice and yummy? Yeah, you didn't leave much except maybe some of the veggies, but that's like, I guess normal. <laughs> You're so happy. All right, let's go outside. He's very mellow. Why are you so mellow? Hi, good morning. Good morning. You go potty? Come on. Hi. <laughs> He's literally been my shadow this entire past week. Are you just the most handsome thing? The day has come. It's the day that we bring Taz to his forever home. Um, it has officially been a full week that we've had him. I got him last Saturday, um, bright and early at seven o'clock in the morning. And um, now it is probably noon on Saturday, the next week. Um, and yeah, so the owners, they actually live in Pennsylvania. So we are gonna meet halfway. I found a park um, that's kind of in between both of us, but I'm thinking it's probably gonna be closed because all the parks I've tried to go to thus far since the corona outbreak um they've all kind of been like gated up and so you can't even get into like the parking area so i looked around there's like a pet value close by and um like a starbucks and a little shopping area so i think that if we go there um the parking lot will be pretty empty and we'll be able to um do the meet and greet first so they're gonna just meet him feel him out i have no doubt that they're just gonna fall in love with him and then if they decide right then and there um, that they want to be his forever owners. Uh, we're gonna just sign the papers, um, exchange medical papers and the check, and Tazzy Boy will be their forever dog. He is currently looking out the window right now. You wanna come say hi to the camera? No, it's, it's a cool, it's a cool view he's got right now. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm excited for him, and I think it's gonna be awesome. The family, I spoke to them on the phone. We we had a phone call and a FaceTime um, a few days ago. They were just so excited. They had recently, or their last dog was a Shih Tzu and it had recently passed away in October. It is now, what month is it, April? Um, so they were ready to find a new dog um, and they just seemed like they treated their last dog like a king. And so I know that he is going to be also treated like a king. That made me feel really good. Uh, so yeah, it was just kind of a gut decision. This round of fostering was a lot different than when I was fostering my first dog. Um, I got two applications for Zeus, who was my first foster. And so from those two applications, I could really see his best fit, like one or the other. 
this doggy had seven applications and all of them were great. Like everybody was so sweet, everybody wanted him so badly. To pick a forever home for him was so difficult and I knew I was gonna disappoint um, six people <laughs> when I did choose. Uh, so I had phone calls with everybody um, who was available within the beginning of the week. A few people I didn't get to speak with because their applications came in late and I had kind of already made up my mind. So once I made up my mind, I had to email everybody and just be like, hey, we're going with a different applicant. And I got some, not nasty emails, but I got some like, I could tell they were annoyed and like upset and it, it just like kind of hurt. Um, it definitely made me a little bit upset. It like didn't sit well with me, but you know, you get over it, I guess. Um, and I just had to remind myself that I was making the right decision. This is all because everybody's home right now and everybody wants a dog. So our, the rescue that I'm working with, they even sent out an email and they're like, this is the most busy we've ever been. We had to take on new volunteers, this and that. Um, they're really overwhelmed. So I think that might just be trickling down. Um, everybody really wants to get their hands on this type of pupper because he's just so perfect. Are you so perfect? Mm. So basically everything kind of went the same as it did with Zeus, minus the fact that there were so many more applications and it kind of moved fast. I was getting applications for Taz before I even had him. Like I, I think it was on the Friday before he got dropped off. Um, I was getting applications for people who were interested and it's hard to um, look through an application and see if it's a right fit if you don't even know the dog yet. Um, I only had a tiny description of his personality, things that he liked. It was the bare minimum. And so it's hard to like jump right away and be like, yeah, that's a good fit. You have the dog for like a few days and then give him up. I don't know if that's selfish for me to say, but I think it's important for the dog to settle in with you and then start showing its real personality before you place it with a full-time long-term owner. Um, yeah, so that's just my little two cents about what I learned this go around. Um, but I will check in again after we do the meet and greet, update you um, afterwards, of course, to see if he actually gets adopted, which I'm sure he will. Um, and yeah, it's gonna be fun. We're gonna take him in the car for the first time. His butt is just gonna be here for the rest of the video, I'm guessing, because he's loving what is going on outside that window. Put that down. Um, yeah, so that's that and I will send updates and I guess you'll come along with us on the long drive. <laughs>
we are back in the sitting room for our conclusion for this session of fostering a dog during quarantine. The whole process of the adoption um, during that day, I wasn't really able to film too much because uh, it's just a little chaotic. You know, you have your dog on a leash and you don't really want to like get out and start filming um, a family <laughs> if they don't want you to. So um, we met at a park, as I had mentioned, and it was barricaded, but we were still able to like pull into a driveway kind of area. And so we just had our cars like next to each other. Everybody was wearing masks. It was a meet and greet first. So I just um, gave the leash to the mother and she had two sons and her husband was also there. So they kind of just walked him around the grassy area and he was so great. He like instantly just started walking and sniffing around. Um, he didn't do any of the, <laughs> the sad triggers that Zeus had done. So when I gave Zeus to his new owners he just kept looking at pat and i and like he he was just a little bit stressed and unsure but taz was like oh i like people here we go here's more people so he's sniffing around giving kisses and like it was just so great they fell in love with him instantly i had no doubt that they wouldn't and so they gave it the thumbs up we signed the paperwork and they gave the check i gave them the medical records and you know, they got in the car and that was it. It was just super quick and easy. And I got into the car and I didn't feel a, like sadness at all. I was like very sure of myself and happy for them. Um, so yeah, it the first one always hurts the most, you know? It always cuts the deepest because you have nothing to compare it to. Um, but going into it this time around, I was like, this is what I signed up for. And you know, that wasn't my dog. I was just this kind of intermediate placement for him. And you know, he opened up so much just being with me for a week. Um, I have n no doubt that he's just going to be 10 times more amazing when he is with his new family for a month, two months. He's just gonna be like the happiest little dog in the world. <laughs> yeah, so I hope this kind of video is helpful for anybody who's potentially thinking of fostering. Um, it's awesome. I would do this long term if I could, even through coronavirus um, quarantine time. But unfortunately, my job doesn't really work like that. If that was the case, I'd probably have a dog. But it is such a cool thing to do um, to kind of give back and you know give give some love to a doggy who needs it, and then and then give that loving doggy to a family who needs that. So it's really really cool. Um, I definitely recommend doing it. Um, but yeah, that's the story of me and Taz. <laughs>